And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Now what? Thanks for inviting me to your tiny hot seat. I've been following you for, well, probably about six months now. It hasn't taken me long to realize that no matter what I ask, you're going to give me the same answer. (laughs) So I'm going to come from a little bit different angle. So growing up, I always thought it was kind of a neat coincidence that I was born three years, three months, and three days after my brother. And I didn't really know what that meant or if it meant anything. But as I've gotten older, it was funny on my 33rd year in existence, in my third month, third week, and third day, I ran into a video online that kind of led me down this rabbit hole. That kind of led me to you and kind of this broader existence and that the things that I thought I knew growing up weren't necessarily the case. I guess my question is, what's this pattern of threes that just seems to keep happening in my life? And from what I understand, it's, it has to do with something that's about ready to happen. A little bit of, I've learned about numerology. Well, you heard us say earlier that your inner being is aware of where you stand in terms of your ability right now to allow knows where you stand in relationship to everything that you want and is calling you through your path of resistance to it so things that become symbolic to you are particularly valuable to your inner being who's guiding you for example Esther has noticed and it's because this is a symbol to her that often when somebody makes their transition a bird will show up a sort of pesky bird a sort of insistent bird who will behave uncharacteristically of their natural behavior and they punch away at precise moments thoughts that Esther is having that this person who has reemerged in a non-physical would like Esther to be aware of. So when Esther, with all of the moving around of her thoughts, will be in the middle of a thought, very often a bird will do something really interesting, like land right next to her or even on her or appear at her window and stay there until she thinks, oh, what was I just thinking about? Or dive bomb into the swimming pool for no apparent reason. And so whatever symbols you have come to consciously agree upon your inner being will use them incessantly to punctuate points okay because i see number patterns a lot in my life that's primarily what it is about okay Okay. play the game decide that you like two 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 or three 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 or four 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 or five 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 or six 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 and notice that you wake up at two 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 and three 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 and four 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 and five 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 and six 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 whatever agreement you make will be the advantage that your inner being will offer to you. As long as I stay away from 666. (laughs) No reason to. (laughs) So it basically has the meaning that I apply to it. It does. Everything does. But that's not to put it down in any way. That's not to make it unimportant. It's very important. Well, yeah, I've heard that you've said that, you know, this all is very mathematically based. The universe is very numbers based. It is your agreement of understanding. It's your agreement to pay particular attention. In time, you'll be so focused in all moments that you won't need those extra emphasis to make you pay attention. You'll be so tuned to the feeling of your very subtle emotions that you'll understand, you'll have those understandings. But meanwhile, those more bulky, obvious ones will do just fine. Right, right. So along that path, I kind of started to do a little bit of meditation, just see, hey, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. And I had a pretty profound experience the first time I did it, one that just kind of kept the interest alive for sure and then one day a kind of an odd thing happened where I felt like somebody cracked an egg over my head and it was a very distinct feeling and I almost have a like an energy or maybe some might say a chakra has opened up I don't know exactly what that means your interpretation of it is exactly right and whatever it took for you to interpret it in that way is not so important for Esther 
we used to use the expression when your passageway opens and of course that was sort of the bulky awkward translation that Esther was offering in those days mm -hmm. because it seemed to her that there needed to be some sort of passageway between non-physical and her of course there isn't it's coming to you through every cell in your body right. but however you interpret it is however you interpret it and we'll take whatever way of interpretation you're willing to find okay. but for Esther she had her eyes closed what she described as a purple vortex with its outer edge far out and its pointed edge right at just barreled in her head for what felt like five minutes mm -hmm. and she felt transformed after that when she saw the movie phenomenon there was a scene in it that was so close to what she'd experienced that she felt like someone must have heard our explanation of it and duplicated it and then they gave the guy a brain tumor and, and so then she was annoyed with it <laughs> but the experiences that you have are unique and important mm -hmm. and no two are alike sure yeah so along kind of that same path kind of led me down the path of whole chakra thing and Reiki and doing that type of stuff and I so I just went and I tried it out and about half hour in she just stops and she just looks at me and goes did you know you're a healer and I was like I didn't know how to take that but I do have a sense of energy coming out my hands that I don't know if I'm interpreting it that or because she said that or well you can be whatever you want to be but what she was recognizing was what we call an open passageway is as good a word as anything in that moment you were open to the energy and she was sensing or recognizing that connection of that stronger energy most people have so much resistance up that even though the energy is flowing to them they don't allow it to flow through them Sure. And so what she recognized with you, and it must be with anyone who is healing, the energy is flowing through you. Oh, I could feel it. But you are not projecting it at anyone. It is coming in response to you. Here's the thing. Everyone has their own passageway. Everyone has their own relationship with the energy. And so no one needs someone else to use their passageway to heal them. Everyone has their own passageway. And sometimes healers think especially in the beginning before they've had some experience that their job is to receive the energy let it flow and then direct it somewhere but if you open your passageway and direct energy to someone who is not somewhat open and receiving it you can sort of electrocute yourself because there's a blowback from that and because it's not the way that you intended for it to be but as someone who's open to the energy you can influence through your steadiness of energy and through the words that flow through you through your understanding through your knowing you can influence them opening their own passageway they don't need you as a conduit through which the energy will flow right. you are an example of a conduit through which the energy flows well and I, I haven't even really tried to obviously heal anybody I mean it would have been nice but I mean even on myself you know I as I get younger every day right? you are advantage to everyone when you hold someone as your object of attention while you are in concert with that energy you are to their advantage and that would be our definition of healing so how do I fix my knee by giving it as little attention as possible and allowing it to do what it naturally will do if you stay out of the way because the cork will float unless you hold it under the water when you hold it under the water it's not floating but when you let go of it it will float the vibration naturally raises that sharp pain just brings it right back into existence but it's not always there right that's so the key that. it doesn't matter how anything reached the place that it now is because all of your power is here and now so if you spend a lot of time trying to figure out how you got here or remembering the steps along the way then you hold yourself in that vibrational place of resistance the physical discomfort any pain that you feel is just exaggerated emotion if you've got some resistance and you don't recognize it and do something about focusing in a way that allows the resistance to soften it will get bigger and eventually it gets big enough that then it is harder to take your attention from yeah. it but you still can yeah so now apply the conversation about healing to your own self one day a woman held her hands out to us she said I'm a healer and look my hands are blistered my hands are blistered so much energy flows through me that it's blistering my hands 
and we said use your healing energy on them right and so so straightforward in the same way that we just said to you that if you tune in and you do and the energy flows through you and it does and you direct it somewhere and they are not receiving it that there's a sort of blowback their resistance is not receiving the energy that's being projected you can have a physical sensation or effect from that and the same thing is happening when the cells of your own body take everybody else out of the equation when the cells of your own body are requesting energy for recovery or for rejuvenation but you've got some thought some chronic thought that you think that doesn't allow it then that blowback happens in some specific part of your anatomy see how it works yeah yeah so the feeling of stumbling or the feeling of not being straightforward or the feeling of trying too hard or the feeling of obstacles being in your way in other words those kinds of thoughts often represent themselves in that way the feeling that something is out of your control and you're not able to move forward as effectively as you want to it's something around that right right yeah Esther blamed it on picking up a big piece of luggage picked up a piece of luggage that was really too heavy for her wrestled at the ground but it was not the luggage itself it was the attitude with which I have to do this thing that I don't really want to do and shouldn't really be doing here I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing and then just like the bird showing up at the right time the pulled muscle shows up at the right time too doesn't right, it right right well I hesitate to even talk about it because like you say the more you talk about it, the the lack thereof the more you magnify it we are not encouraging you to feel guarded about a discussion that could lead to an understanding and so sometimes by clarifying what you don't want you amplify what you do want there's benefit in that and your inner being is always calling you forward and sometimes calling you through discomfort on your way to comfort in other words you are where you are and an acceptance of where you are relative to everything is really beneficial if you can just accept it rather than judge it rather than be mad at yourself about it sure. rather than question it or rather than resent it if you can just accept that you are where you are now what now what sort of like we used to tell a story it's a really good one of Jerry and Esther traveling from Phoenix on their way to San Diego and getting about halfway on Interstate 8 and there they are in Yuma and they really didn't want to be in Yuma and we said they never were so discouraged about being in Yuma instead of San Diego that they got disoriented and went back to Phoenix Phoenix Yuma Phoenix Yuma what happened to San Diego Phoenix Yuma Phoenix Yuma Phoenix Yuma and so the same sort of thing you're often not all the way where you think you really want to be but in a very physical very practical journey you accept that there are steps along the way on your way to where you really want to be and if you can relax and enjoy those steps or enjoy that part of it take pleasure in the clarification that's coming from it then it can be meaningful then it can be beneficial then you can move more quickly through it and then you never need to return to it again in other words it's sort of been there done that don't need to go back on that route haven't you done that haven't you ever taken a route and said Jerry had a map of the nation as they were crisscrossing in their monster bus around the nation and there were places on the map where he had just put big squiggly lines which meant don't take this route again <laughs> they had an exit guide when they would stop that explained what was at every exit on every major interstate and on some of them he had big red X's never eat here again <laughs> And every year he got a new exit guide and every year he moved those things forward because don't you want the benefit of having been there and having made your decision do you have to keep making the same decisions over and over again so there is some benefit in having some conversations about what you don't want on your way to clarifying what you do want but once you've identified what you do want then let that be the predominance of what you talk about yeah enough it's good really good yeah,